Hello, I'm Chung Su Kim, uh, working at Carl Bergrens Group at MIT. Today I'm going to talk about focused helium ion beam interaction in diamond and especially dedicated to the ion nanostructure interactions and control of nanomorphology. This work was funded by Gordon and Barrymore Foundation at Light Tech before I start talk. The helium ion microscopy has been shown is unique capability of nanoscale imaging and nanoscale fabrication. This is one of the extreme example of the nanoscale imaging, which gives a resolution of 0.21 nanometer, which never been shown before from other electron other microscopy. And this is the, another example of the nanofabrication capability, sub so five nanometer of patterning. We, fabricate, we could fabricate the nanopore with the less than five nanometer of diameter on the thin membrane diamond. And this focus, this focus helium beam has, uh, before the utilization of the focus helium beam, the ion beam implantation had been used to change the properties of semiconductor industry. Well, recently there are some good useful references which he presented presenting the challenging of property of morphology and of nanostructures by ion implantation and or ion irradiation. In these two articles I show in here, they show the like the property changes and the control of morphology by aligning the nano wires. So the, when the ion was irradiated onto this kind of structure, the ion beam was broadened. It's very broad ion beam, large area ion beam, which is like called ion implantation. But if we want to make a control, if we want to make a modification of the nanostructure by ion beam, we think we have to use focused helium ion beam because we need to, because the focused helium ion beam can do make a localized processing onto the specific position of nanostructured material and nanostructure. And so in order to understand very well and to make a modification of nanostructure by ion radiation, we need to understand very well how the ion moves, how ion behaves inside the solid, so the interaction. There are some examples people have been used to study the ion-solid interaction using focused or non-focused ion beam. For the bark, for the particle thin membrane, for the horizontal thin membrane, for the nanowire. So among these methods, we choose, we choose the thin membrane, which is vertically stacked method, because it can be used direct imaging F just light after the focus helium ion beam irradiation. So from this one, we slightly improved this method by incorporating with focused gallium ion beam technology. So this is what we used in our study. First, we used, we, we fabricate the thin membrane by focused gallium ion beam because this focus gallium ion beam can do control the geometry of the nanostructure. So we can control the thickness, we can control the shape using focus ion beam, so we can study about the geometry dependent characteristic. So anyway, we first fabricate the thin membrane and then we do exposure the ion onto the top of the membrane. And of course you can control the position where position of where the ion can be radiated. And then we move on to the electron microscope and then we try to estimate the, the distribution of the ion beam. <coughs> this is the one of the examples of the experimental platform of the geometry controlled nanostructure. Using the focus gallium ion beam, we can fabricate the uniform thickness of membrane. Also, we can fabricate the 
bearing thickness membrane, as shown in this figure. And then we can expose the focused helium ion beam onto the top of the membrane, shown in here. And then we also used, uh, in order to study the helium ion beam, focused helium ion beam interaction with the nanostructure, we used single crystal diamond. This single crystal diamond has been used from drilling to the ultra sharp knives for this eye surgery, and then even in nanotechnology, it had less of advantage because it has extremely high Young's modulus and it is chemically inert and biocompatible. And it can be functionalized for the bio nano application, and especially this can be used for the quantum optics and the computation. The, one of the examples is shown in the below figure. And particularly in our group, this diamond can be used to make uh, electron beam splitter for the quantum electron microscope. So this is how we do the experiment. So we first prepare the 70 nanometer of thickness of diamond of thin membrane. And then we do expose the helium ion focus helium ion beam with 35 keV with 1.3 picoampere of proof current. Then we expose the focus helium ion beam on top of the membrane by increasing the number of ions, so called ion dose. And we also used silicon crystal to make a comparison with this diamond membrane. And we, was, we mostly focused on the study of the material difference between silicon and diamond. We also investigated the effect of crystal orientation and the thickness of the diamond. So this is the image micrograph taken just right after focus of helium ion beam exposure onto the diamond membrane. This is a top view for the diamond crystal, which has a crystal orientation of 110. From this figure, we can see the new geometry never been shown before. So we started from this, something like volume expansion to quantify the result of helium ion beam distribution. And this is a result of the measured expanded volume from the original thickness to the expanded thickness in length scale. And both silicon and diamond have a similar tendency. By increasing ion dose, the thickness of, of diamond was increased. But for the diamond, it has more huge effect for the volume expansion toward both side walls by shaping like spear-like structure inside the, the membrane. <clears throat> the light to figure shows the, the result from the silicon diamond and the silicon. The top one is from the diamond and the bottom one is from the silicon. As you see in this picture, diamond had a significant effect of the volume expansion by focused helium ion beam irradiation. Like the, the original thickness was seven, 73 nanometer, and it, is, it was expanded to 240 nanometer. And this is the cross section of the helium ion beam distribution for the case of ex the maximum ion dose we applied. For the silicon, this is somewhat normal. We can see this kind of structure from many articles, many other studies. And uh, the distribution range is, is also very clearly visible because inside the, where the helium ion beam interact with the, di the silicon, with the, the structure, it was highly damaged by causing some amorphization. And the length of the distribution, longitudinal length of distribution was 433 nanometer. And for the case of the diamond, it was totally different compared to the silicon. This kind of the distribution has not been shown until now. And for the case of diamond, the dist longitudinal distribution was reached up to 853 nanometer. To see clearly how the helium ion beam distribution evolves as a function of the ion dose, we made the profile from the TM image we took. And this is the minimum dose.
by increasing the ion dose, the effect of the uh, helium ion distribution was totally different between silicon and diamond. For the silicon, it's wider and shorter, and for the diamond, it is narrower compared to the silicon, but it, is, it was really, really longer compared to the silicon. As you see in this photo, in this uh, schematics, uh, the longitudinal range of the helium ion beam distribution was doubled for the diamond compared to the silicon. <clears throat> so, why this kind of situation happened? Why he diamond can have, have the totally different geometry, cross-section geometry? We think this is, is occurred to induced by the free volume formation inside the, the membrane, diamond membrane. So in order to estimate, to, in order to check the existence of the free volume, we used Fresnel contrast imaging, which is called also through the focus imaging in TEM, and then by making under focus and in focus and over focus, we can find out the, the existence of free volume inside the diamond membrane with a lateral width of around 80 nanometers. So how this kind of helium, like free volume, can be formed inside the membrane? So first, we start with the trim simulation with 35 kV with 100,000 ions. And then this is the, the left one is, is for the silicon, which has a 2.33 gram per cubic centimeter of density. And the light one is for the diamond, which has a 3.515 gram per cubic centimeter of mass density. If you see this diagram, we can easily see the, the effect of the material by the helium ion beam uh, exposure. Silicon has a much, much larger interaction volume inside the membrane. Then we place to make a fair comparison for our case because we use 70 nanometer membrane. We place the bar which has a 70 nanometer of width. Then we can see we can compare the helium ion beam distribution distribution in detail. For the silicon, most of helium ions were escaped from the 70 nanometer of thickness. And for the diamond, most of helium ion beam play, played inside the, the membrane, and some of them were escaped from the thin membrane. So we can say for the diamond, there was strong accumulation of helium ion, helium ion and some of them are neutralized inside the, the membrane, and it triggered the free volume inside the membrane. So this is the mechanism of uh, volume expansion related to the free volume. How we want to know how the volume expansion and the free volume was triggered. So I will start this part again. Uh, so how the helium ion and the helium gas was accumulated, and then how, why, how this can trigger the volumetric deformation. When the ion is radiated onto the membrane, it will be, it will be slowed down, and then it will be lasted some air after losing their all energy. By putting more iron and more and more, then the the distinction between the armor porous region and the crystal region will be very clear. This is what we call geometrical constraints. In the meanwhile, by making strong the geometrical constraints, inside the membrane, the helium gas, helium ion, start to form helium nanobubble. Then this nanobubble can be grown by the nucleation coalescence by forming a larger cluster void. This larger cluster void can make a force acting on the wall, and this force can easily deform the amorphidized diamond.
because amorphized diamond has a, the, has a lower density compared to the single crystal diamond. So in order to estimate the density lost by helium ion beam distribution inside the membrane, we use the, the electron energy loss spectroscopy to make a density map of this lead box area. And this is the estimated density map uh, with the EELS technique. This density map was calculated for calculated density from the volume plasma peak shift with the relationship written in here. As you see in this photo, in this figure, the, the density of the amorphous region distributed helium ion by the distributed helium ion, the density was decreased from 3.34 to 1.69. It, it was almost 50% of the density loss. And this is, this is also very strongly related to the long-range ion propagation. By forming the free volume, then ion can face new substrate, substrate inside the membrane, and then it will make another distribution, like, like new substrate. And then make another volume expansion, and then face new substrate, and then helium ion beam can be again distributed. So, the, so we can find out very long range ion distribution triggered by the volume expansion in the, because, uh, because it has a free volume inside. So it means the helium ion beam can travel without any disturbance inside the membrane. So actually, we have a great proof of the undisturbed focused helium ion beam travel inside the membrane. And the left feature is we used for the cross-section I showed before for highest ion dose we used. If we magnify at the, at the end of the volume expansion, we can see very small trace of the focused helium ion beam, which has uh, had the uh, width of 1.07 nanometer. So this means the free volume is there, was there, and then helium ion beam can travel with really, really long distance without any disturbance inside the membrane. We also try to investigate the effect of the crystal orientation of the diamond between 110 and 100. As you see in this photo, there was some difference because the higher, dense, higher density structure gives a more longer distribution. One can assume, one can judge uh, this is, is triggered by, induced by the effect of the density difference, but actually we had one problem. The thickness was slightly different. We the both the difference of the thickness was 22 nanometer. To remove the effect of the 22 nanometer of difference, we start to investigate the effect of the thickness. And this is the result. Uh, some example we made before. You can clearly see the difference of the helium ion beam distribution for, for the varying for different thickness. The lesser, the smaller thickness membrane gives a higher volume expansion and thicker diamond membrane gives a smaller vol volume expansion. And also the longitudinal range shown in the below photo was also very different. And then we from this one, we measure the original thickness and the extended thickness of the membrane, and then we calculate the elongation and strain. In short, actually, the effect of, of the crystal line structure had no effect from this diagram. The strain for both two different crystal orientation diamonds has the same, 
also the elongation was the same. So we can say there was negligible effect of crystal orientation for both diamond crystalline structure. But from this graph, we can find out three important information. The maximum strain occurred at the minimum thickness of membrane, and the maximum elongation was happened at 120 nanometer of membrane thickness. And also, at over 350 nanometer, there was, we could see the suppression of the deformation, which we called micro to micro transition of nanostructure. So we can say, if the structure has 300, over 350 nanometer of thickness, now that is like a bulk structure, not the smaller microstructure. So until now, we studied about how this kind of volume ex expansion happened, how the longitudinal, how the long, really long range travel, and the, how this kind of structure form, and how the really long range travel happened by the focus irradiation onto the diamond membrane. But if we don't know any information of this graph, this photo, we only know this is a diamond. We only know this scale by is 500 nanometer. Then what is this, what this look like? This is like a 3D structure. Something spear inside the membrane. So we'd like to control the nanomorphology with this idea by controlling the material and geometry and ion species and energy and those and direction. We are going to show some example using diamond and the helium ion beam uh, parameters to make uh, to show the 3D fabrication capability. And this is what we call nanotuper tubes. We first make a nano pillar and then we do expose the focus helium ion beam at the center of the pillar, then we actually expect very large volume expansion shown in the 3D CAD model. But actually, we couldn't see this kind of volume expansion inside uh, from this nano pillar. Because like I explained before, here we cannot find out any geometrical constraint. So most of helium ion inserted into this nanopillar was just escaped through the radial direction. So it had only very small, small volume expansion on top of the nanopillar. So we approach it in different way. So we irradiate the focus helium beam at the bottom of the nanopillar. Then the bottom substrate, which is is like a burk, a very large crystalline area, act as a kind of geometric constraint. Then we can deflect the nanopillar with 7.12 degree. Then we also utilize the line scanning, not just point, ex point exposure. We expose the focus helium ion beam in a line onto the diamond membrane. The, then we can see the cylindrical geometry embedded inside the membrane. Like for the point exposure, we could see the volume expansion from 98 nanometer to 220 nanometer. And at the side view, we can clearly see the effect of this volume expansion along the scan direction. And we also apply the diagonal scanning onto the, the top membrane, then we can fabricate the asymmetric cylindrical geometry inside the membrane. Then this is, in this case, the geometrical constraint was changed by the direction of the ion beam. And we also tried to fabricate the hemisphere geometry using in-plane membrane we expose the, fo uh, the focus helium beam at the backside of membrane. Then we can 
from the hemisphere geometry at the opposite side of the membrane. This is the one of the one of the example as a function of iron dose. By varying the iron dose, we can fabricate the different size of hemisphere geometry. So in this talk, I investigate, I studied about range di distribution of focus helium ion beam at nano dimension. And we could observe volume expansion and long range ion propagation triggered by loss of density, bubble growth, and geometrical constraint simultaneously. And we could find out the very small, almost negligible effect of crystal orientation. And we could find a significant uh, effect of thickness, I'd like to say geometry, showing micro to bulk transition of structure around 350 nanometer of the thickness of the membrane. And we could show the control of nanomorphology by showing possibility of embedding a 3D structure into the nanostructure. Then we move step forward from helium to neon. So we expose the focused neon ion beam, and then we could see the slightly different geometry compared to the helium. Because neon ion beam is, is in between helium and gallium ion, we think, initially we think, the competition between sputtering and the distribution is so competitive, so the, the geometry driven by focused neon ion beam had a different geometry compared to the helium ion beam. So we are going to study on that. And thank you. If you have any questions, please email me. And I'd like to thank again for our funding agency, funding agency of Gordon and Barrymore Foundation. Thank you.